There's no such thing as voter fraud. Nothing. Another MAGA conspiracy theory, right? Well, one primary race in Connecticut was so rife with fraud that the results have been overturned by a judge after shocking new video surfaced of what appears to be multiple people stuffing absentee ballots into collection boxes. A judge ruling that the Bridgeport mayoral Democrat primary has to be held again to determine who should be on the ballot. Now, incumbent Mayor Joe Gannon previously defeated challenger John Gomez by just 251 votes. But a primary redo is very tricky because the general election is on Tuesday, which means voters may have to come back after they vote in the primary to vote on the rightful Democrat nominee. If they even know who it is then. What are you going to do? Told you. We're going to hang out and watch a movie. I'm going to take some pictures. We're going to hang out. I'm going to show you some voter fraud. We're going to have a good time. Elon Musk. We got Elon Musk to sound off on voter fraud. That's the power of this audience. Welcome to Free For All Friday. It's your boy, Benny. Friday, November 3rd, 2023. Elon Musk responded to our show and called out institutional voter fraud. You cannot escape this issue. We are so excited to be the tip of the spear and you helped it all happen. So thank you. We are gonna change America by speaking truth. The bravest thing you can do in dark times is to simply state the truth. It is the bravest thing you can do. Elon Musk calls out Democrat election fraud after judge overturns election. Nancy Pelosi gets subpoenaed in criminal case. What's that about? Nancy Pelosi, like, I made a random announcement in the House. I am now part of a criminal case. Oh, we'll look into it, baby. And Sam Bankman fraud found guilty on all counts. Now the biggest Democrat donor in America is going to go to prison for 115 years. Baby, what a show. And of course, ALX, the great producer ALX, will join the show to break it all down for us. My name is Benny Johnson, and this is The Benny Show. We are full of pep and energy this morning. That is because sweet, delicious caffeine pulses through my veins and because protein pulses through my muscles. Where do I get my protein? I get it from farmers, and I get it from, of course, Moink. Moink provides me with the steak and the pork and the chicken and the fish and the wild-caught Alaskan sand that comes delivered right to my door and I eat that protein up. I fix it for my family. I made bacon just this last weekend. The bacon is thick, it is delicious, and it is so good for you. They want to ban meat for a reason. It's because you need protein. Keep America farming. Keep protein, real protein, good protein, grass-fed protein, pulsating through your veins. Moinkbox.com slash Benny right now. Listeners get free ground beef for a year. Best year of ground beef your life will never be the same after you eat a burger, juicy burger with Moink ground beef. M-O-I-N-K, box.com slash Benny. Let's go, baby. Speaking of chopping up some bloody red meat, we got him. We got him. Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. Elon Musk, the most powerful man in the world. How, how can you say that, Benny? Is he president or anything? Well, well okay, uh, let, let, just take a step back. Whether you love him or hate him, we love him. We love him. Elon Musk not only controls X, which is the most powerful speech and journalism platform on earth, inarguably, right? Uh, and if you're, whatever you're watching on, whatever you're watching our show on, if you're watching on X, awesome. We get thousands and thousands of viewers on X. If you're watching on other platforms, amazing. But you, to, if, you, if there's breaking news, which app do you open up? Okay, there's breaking news, something big happened in the world, Israel, whatever, Gaza. What app do you go to? X, man. I mean, it, it really is. It's the, it's the breaking news app of the world. So not only does he own that completely, it's a private company. He owns it. Uh, not only is the users sp skyrocketing, not only is he also the richest man on earth based on just money in the bank, he's the richest guy in the world. He's also the most powerful because he controls Skynet. Uh, you know, he controls SpaceX. He controls all the satellites that we use to fight wars, and to deliver internet to uh, 
uh, like the middle of uh, a battlefield in the middle of the desert to fly drones. Like you couldn't fight, for instance, you couldn't fight the, Uk he was able to shut down a preemptive Ukrainian strike on Russian territory that would have sunk the entire Russian fleet at bay. Like that's real power, man. I mean, that's real power. They're panicking over Elon Musk. So when I say he's the most powerful man in the world, that's what I mean. Like if you add all those things together, you make him the most powerful guy on earth, the most culturally relevant man on earth. And he tweeted yesterday. We'll show you. We shared yesterday our story, the, the story from Connecticut. Now, we've talked a lot about it. A quick rehash is thus. A judge in Connecticut from Bridgeport, Connecticut, has overturned a election where two Democrats were running against each other in a primary. The judge overturned it because there is demonstrable video evidence of county officials and Democrat Party members stuffing ballot boxes, shoving unaccountable mail-in ballots into the ballot boxes. Here you are, ladies and gentlemen. There is the, the Democrat chairwoman of Bridgeport, Connecticut, shoving, she, she gets, she's real cute. She, she walks off camera. She feel it. She's like walking off camera. She's, I love, I love, they're, they're the smartest. They're definitely sending their best with election fraud. She wander, she wobbles over and then returns and drops more ballots off and then wobbles over and returns. And she does this multiple times. She has a bag of ballots at 5 a.m. in the morning. What the hell do you think's going on? What do you think's going on? Now, of course, it's illegal in the state of Connecticut to drop off anyone else's ballot. You can't do that. You have to have like a you have to have a legal form filled out that says you can be the bearer of this ballot. This lady's walking in, doesn't have any form. She pled the fifth. She's a Democrat committee woman for the county. Pled the fifth. The judge has ordered a new election. By the way, this lady works for the county. How corrupt is this system? Works for the county. So the judge said in a quote that the volume of ballots were so mishandled such that it calls into serious doubt the winner of the election and the court is unable to determine the legitimate results of this primary. The judge said of the video that we just played for you, the videos are so shocking that the court should be shocked and all parties should be shocked at this. So the judge flipped the election, said, nope, not, I'm not approving the results of this election. This is a broken election system. Now I'm going to count I'm going to count down the similarity. Let's count down the similarities between what happened in this little microcosm, this little Democrat enclave. It's amazing. It's amazing what we've learned. Uh, it's amazing what's happened here. Because it's a Democrat versus Democrat election fraud, we can now talk about it. <laughs> wow, it's a miracle. The AP here. I just want to let, let make sure we put up the AP here just so that everyone's aware. You know, this is a, being reported out by the corporate press. Well, 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 if it's reported by the corporate press, it's Democrats against Democrats, election fraud, then we have, when the, finally we got a live wire here. So let's count down the similarities of what's happening here in Bridgeport. Uh, pop up the, uh, pop up the AP article too, when you got it. So the similarities are this, unaccountable, unlimited mail-in ballots. You make the ballots worth less than the paper they're printed on. Uh, this is an amazing story uh, that it happened to me and then happened to everyone I know in Washington, D.C. I lived in, I, I owned a home in Washington, D.C. I lived there for uh, a decade. Uh, terrible mistake. But that's where I cut my teeth and got started in this profession. Uh, when D.C. went to mail-in balloting during COVID, the home that I, I bought, I, I lived in a home, I, I bought a house, and I lived in this teeny little house in this really bad part of town uh, for five years. I got the ballots of every person that had ever been registered to that address. Ballots poured into my home. Live ballots, real ballots. Of course, I wouldn't, I didn't, didn't want to touch them. You know, if I, if I'd gone through and filled them all out for Donald Trump, boy, you'd <laughs> trust, trust me that, uh, you'd never see me again. But imagine if you had done what the regime had wanted you to do in that scenario. Imagine the uh, ability for fraud to occur in that scenario. 
Because now I have this stack of ballots this big. Every person that had ever lived at my residence, I got their ballot sitting in my hot little hands. I got a photo of it somewhere on my phone. Big stack of ballots. Suddenly I was worth like 10, 20 voters. I had the ballots of 10, 20 voters. What election cycle should I, I should never be able to hold someone else's vote, right? And just like I shouldn't be able to hold someone else's child if they don't want me to or something else sacred to them, drive their car, enter their home. Like this is something sacred, right? I shouldn't be able to hold your ballot in my hand. This is insane. It was so violative. Anyway, unlimited election ballots. This is how this late, this is how they were able to pull off this heist in Connecticut. Unlimited election ballots, unaccountable drop boxes. No, so nobody monitors where you shove the ballots when you when you drop them off. Nobody monitors that. And an inability to match up signature verification on the ballots, right? You're supposed to sign your name. All these states have like effectively zero signature verification and the, the, and the names of the ballots. So there's no way to ever match up the ballots. We actually have a huge update for, from Arizona on that topic too. There's been a massive update in Arizona because that's been a huge problem in Arizona. This is the exact same problem. So then they, the, so then the ballots just eff- effectively, as soon as you separate the ballot from the envelope, You have no way, you just mix them all together and there's no accountability in the process. Then they all get rammed through a machine and they're gone. Boom. So drop boxes should be elite. Election drop boxes should be illegal in all 50 states. There should be a federal law that makes them illegal. Mail-in voting should be by request only like it is here in Florida. Like you need to make a request and it needs to be one person, one ballot request, not mass mail-in voting. It was so, it was so violative. It was so, cra- I mean, listen, man, they like sent, they sent me a stack of ballots. I was holding like 12 other people's ballots in my hand. I didn't ask for that. They mailed them to me. So now the judge is saying, the judge in Connecticut, a Democrat judge in Connecticut is saying, this is such trash the way that we run, ran this election. And the evidence of fraud is so high that the election's done. We, I, I overturn it. It's no, we're not letting an election go forward. I don't know who the legitimate winner of this election is. So we're redoing the election. Hmm, I, I thought that couldn't happen. Donald Trump, they're trying to put Donald Trump in prison in Georgia for saying the exact same thing. Remember when a water pipe burst? The water pipe, it burst. Everyone leave. Yeah. And the video cameras kept running. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I got great news for you. Not only have we made, have, have we, are we the glitch in the matrix? We are like now in control. Like things are starting, like things are starting to move at a pace that is really remarkable. So Elon Musk saw our reporting yesterday and then sent this tweet. It's awesome. Our reporting yesterday. Elon Musk saying, judge orders new election in Connecticut town after surveillance video showed ballot stuffing in drop boxes. This happened, what happened here is beyond a reasonable doubt. The only question is how common is it? These are the real questions, ladies and gentlemen. These are the real questions. How common is it? And now are we allowed to talk about it because it happened just to Democrats versus Democrats? Are we finally able, are we finally able to bring forward like the, the, that which is laid bare before our very eyes? Libs, do you not think that like Republicans could also take advantage of this broken system? Immoral Republicans? Like what have, what have you done? What have you done? Do you not think that this could potentially backfire on you? You see, there's more of us than there are of them. And they know that they need something in order to do the whole, remember the remember the lines, the Biden election line? Find me one of those charts, ALX. Get me one of those charts. The Biden election lines, right? On election night. Why did they stop voting in six swing states on election night? 
I will never forget it as long as I live. I'll be sitting in a nursing home looking just like Joe Biden, acting like Joe Biden. Got my depends on dribbling applesauce out my mouth. I just won't be president. I'll be sitting in a nursing home staring at the birds and they'll say, what's something that's, what is a horrifying thing that you remember from your life, grandpa? And I'll say, when they stopped the counting on election night 2020, why'd they do that? Have they ever done that before? Have you ever remembered an election where they did that? Did they ever do, do you recall an election where they're like, stop the count? Why would that happen? It really makes you wonder. It really means that we should be like Elon Musk and start asking questions like, this is happening beyond a reasonable doubt. So it so happens. So then how common, how often does it happen exactly? Well, if you were to ask Joe Biden, he has a response for you of exactly how often this happened. He says that he built his entire campaign around it. Now you can tell me that he misspoke, that Joe Biden clearly mumbles and stutters and bumbles and falls ass backwards down the stairs. So take it with a grain of salt, but at some point your brain, the dementia, you just start like part of what happens in dementia is you start saying really true things. So people with dementia, they're like really mean and they're like, say things, they'll have spates of anger. I've seen this in my own family of obviously with suffering of my own grandparents, they'll have spates of anger where they just say true things. They'll just yell true things at you, right? You're fat. <laughs> Joe Biden did that to one guy. Look fat. Do push-ups. Joe Biden, live on camera. Take it however you will. But I'm able to play the words of the man, and he said, I'm creating the greatest election fraud organization in American history. Watch. We have put together, and you guys did, did it for our administration, the President Obama's administration before this. We have put together... I think the most extensive and inclusive voter fraud organization in the history of American politics. Oh, am I not allowed to like look at graphs like this and say that there is absolutely no mathematical possibility of this happening overnight? What do you, what do you like? This is Wisconsin. Is this Wisconsin? Yeah. Okay. So wh wh where, where, like somebody explain to me the math here, like, do it slowly, do it calmly and do it as though like I'm actually willing to listen to a legitimate explanation for graphs like this. Every single swing state, Pennsylvania, Georgia, Michigan, they all look, all the charts look just like this. Looks just like this. Georgia, stop the vote. There's a water leak. Quick, everyone out. Stop the vote. And then he asks questions about it, and they'll put you in jail. Well, damn it, the truth is important. And so it's worth asking questions. The truth is all we have, and it shall set us free. And so it's worth... <laughs> Now that we have established that when you have two cases, it's amazing, the, the, the new shield that we have, because now we can use this case where it's Democrats against Democrats. Do we have the New Jersey one? Do we have the New Jersey one broken out? Because that one's also amazing. And I know we covered it yesterday. Yeah, okay. But it's worth, it's, it's worth stating. Here you go, the NBC, NBC New York. Where are you getting this, Benny? You, are you getting this from... Alex Jones Infowars? No, pal. I'm getting it from NBC News. <laughs> Patterson City Council President. We'll just cover this really quickly, okay? Real quick. Real quick. Because I need to establish the fact pattern here for you. These scumbags, Democrats, in New Jersey went mailbox to mailbox. They stole the ballots. They then removed the votes from the ballots. Then they checked to see who you voted for. Here we go. Did they vote for me? Oh, they did not vote for me. I'm doing a dramatic reenactment, okay? The 
Quick, start the fog machine. Here's a dramatic reenactment, okay? Unsolved mysteries. Hmm. Let's see. I am I am the Patterson County, New Jersey. What's the guy's name? Mendez. Okay. So I am Mendez, uh, sp- uh, the speaker of the Patterson Council, Alex Mendez. I am Alex Mendez. I have removed your mail-in ballot from your uh, mailbox. I am now looking at who you voted for. Oh, you didn't vote for the right person. I am now tearing your ballot. He threw the ballots away. All right. Check the filing. Put up the attorney general's filing. Check the filing from the attorney general of New Jersey. Now I, Alex Mendez, the politician, am marking a fraudulent ballot. Okay. For me. That's a vote for me. I am folding it up. I am putting it in your envelope. I don't have an envelope. And now I'm mailing it in to be counted. That is a dramatic uh, uh, replay of what they actually literally did. Check the state of New Jersey's website. Why is this not the biggest story in the world right now? Why is this not the biggest story in the, in the country? State of New Jersey, Attorney General. Sometimes you feel like you're taking crazy pills because you're watching this stuff happen in real time. But at least we're talking about it. And I thank you for being part of our show because it's worth, to- it must be spoken about. Someone has to, somebody has to say it. Somebody has to try and signal boost this stuff. What are they charging this guy with? Uh, this guy's getting hit with like 10 felonies. Conspiracy to commit voter fraud, fraud and casting mail-in votes, unauthorized possession of ballots, tampering with public records, falsifying and tampering records, forgery, conspiracy tampering with fabrication of physical evidence, soliciting, procuring, assisting, unlawful registration and violation of election law, com- conspiracy to commit witness tampering. That's what they're charging one guy with. He had a whole pile of people. He had a whole stack of people. We just want to like show you these instances so that when somebody tells you, that was no... There was no voter fraud. You can say, hold up. Uh, Not only was there voter fraud, but it was extremely common. Check this out from Heritage Foundation. This is the Heritage Foundation voter fraud database. An amazing tool here. And we thank the Heritage Foundation for uh, compiling this. So you have, you can search the, we just click search the database. Search the database. Let's just go in 2023. Here we go. In the states of Florida. False registration, ineligible voting, duplicate voting, ineligible voting, fraudulent use of absentee ballots, altering the vote count, ineligible voting, fraudulent use of voting. These are all in 2023. Criminal conviction, criminal conviction, criminal conviction. We have a deeply broken system. Our elections are broken. And it's worth acknowledging that fact. What's the first step? Alcoholics Anonymous, you got to acknowledge you have a problem before you can fix it. How bad? How bad is this system of mail-in voting? CNN, in an amazingly, in an amazing unearthed clip from 2020, CNN accidentally caught a ballot mule on camera. And when they realized what they had done, they like screamed. Watch. The only ballot drop box in Cuyahoga County, Ohio. You can see this woman right here casting her vote. Did you vote for Reagan or Jimmy Carter? Carter. Carter, okay. We don't want to get too personal with people here, but you can see there's actually a traffic jam. We can come around this way and you can see there are cars. <laughs> Sometimes you either, you either choose to laugh or cry in moments like this, okay? Did you, did you see the lady? She, she got a stack of ballots. She's looking like Publisher's Clearinghouse with these ballots. Look at this. Look at that stack of ballots. She's like, get, a, get the camera out of my face. This is the only drop box here in the Cuyahoga County, of course, run by Democrats in Ohio. And here's this lady. Does she work for the county? I'd love to find out. Does she work for the county? Does she work for the Democrat Party? Yeah. Boy, oh boy. Boy, oh boy. And CNN had the little early mail-in ballots cast ticket counter up there ticking away. So Elon Musk is now on board. How awesome is that? How incredible is that? Elon Musk had a response also to our post in the uh, comment section. Elon Musk threaded uh, another video, and I want to show this to you here. 
uh, I believe this is from Georgia. Yes, it's from Georgia, Gwinnett County in Georgia, where you can effectively just see a a woman in maroon. It plays a little weird. There's something wrong with this. Something wrong with this video, or at least it it, it needs to be fast forwarded. You can see a lady in maroon in the maroon dress walk up and just drop hundreds of ballots in the drop boxes. And what I'm saying here is that it's illegal to do that. Okay. It's one thing where it, there are some states where you can like legally grab fistfuls of ballots and no one can stop you. I don't know which states they, those are. I don't know election laws well enough, but I know that you're not allowed to do them in these states. That's what they're going. That's what they're going after in Connecticut. You can't do it. It's illegal. That's why they're overturning the elections. And in most states, it's illegal. Not even, not even like the darkest blue states believe that it should be legal for you to like have fistfuls of someone else's ballots randomly and shoving them into drop boxes. And look at all those people waiting in line. Look at everyone waiting in line. And this lady's just coming in and just shoving all these votes in there into the drop boxes. Uh, what's the explanation there? Exactly. Can somebody explain, like, as Elon Musk says, this is beyond a reasonable doubt. This happens. How common is it? And Elon Musk going, hmm, with a little hourglass. Well, it's common enough that Heritage has the database, and we've shown you thousands and thousands and thousands. Every single day, people get booked, criminally charged with election fraud in this country. You can't, if you, if you don't acknowledge you have a problem, you are doomed to stay in a cycle. So it's worth acknowledging we have a problem. Elon Musk says the amount of fraud in 2020 was not zero. Go. Including ideas, including the truth, which gets back to, it's not true that the election in 2020 was rigged. It wasn't stolen. And I wonder on the platform, I, when you see yes. that, does that end up in a community note or is that something you take more action on? And obviously that applies yes. to so many. I mean, to be clear, I, 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 I don't think it, 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 was, it, was, it was a stolen election. Um, um, but by the same token, if, if somebody's going to say that there's there was never any election fraud anywhere, this is obviously also false. Yeah. Um, if if you if you, if a hundred million people vote, the probability that the fraud is zero is zero. There's going to oh, be. No, of course, there's always going to be some. A but little. Is it gonna, right. I mean, uh, the, the tiniest is, bit, is, perhaps. I mean, there were. This election was audited. It was so many judges. I sure. mean, it went on and on and on, and there was no nothing whatsoever that. I don't want um, to debate this with you. My question is more about. I think it's important to say, like, th th that in any given election, even if you try your hardest, if you've got 100 million votes, there's going to be some some amount of fraud that is not zero, and th and that th that it's important to acknowledge that without saying that that the fraud was of su sufficient magnitude to change the outcome. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so my opinion would be that there was some there was some small amount of fraud, but it was not enough to change the right, outcome. So, uh, what's past his prologue? We must focus on the future. I have little kids. You can't help but like focusing on the future for your children. The best that I can do now is to fix broken systems, to bring light to broken systems, okay? The best I can do. There's a lot of things in the world that I don't like and a lot of things that have happened in the past that I'm furious about. And it's worth learning from. What are, Repu what, what are Republicans doing to prevent this from happening in 2024? That's a great question. Hey, Rana. Hey, RNC, you, you guys doing anything? Are you suing any states to stop the uh, unaccountable drop boxes? The drop boxes are poor. Like, if there's one thing, if I could wave a magic wand, what's one thing you'd take away from the American political system? Probably mail-in votes, unaccountable drop boxes. I don't know which one. Mail-in voting, uh, universal mail-in voting, unaccountable drop boxes. Both extremely, both take the responsibility and the tracking and the accountability out of the system. At least when I go in, how do you vote? I vote in person, I walk in, th they line up all my uh, data and information, they hand me a single ballot, there's like 20 little grannies that are sitting there staring at me, giving me the the the, the, the uh, old granny eye. Uh, no, no fooling around. I, I take that single ballot, I vote, I go and I put it into the box or the machine and that single ballot gets counted. That's it. And there's like a granny give, with little blue glasses on giving me the, and the little um, chain, you know, that connects. You know, the, you know the chain? I don't know. How old do I have to be to get the chain? 
I'm 37. How old do I have to be to get the chain? When do I get the chain? I want the chain. I'm going to go like this, sit like this all day. There you go. Uh, if there is a, uh, if there is a drop box where no one's watching and no one's looking and no one's asking who I am or what I'm doing there, uh, then that is going to invite criminal behavior because there's a lack of accountability. There's no sunlight. Flip on the lights. Just watch the cockroaches run. They don't like it. Roaches don't like it when the light's on them. That's why the lady was sitting there on CNN going, ah, ah, don't film me. <laughs> Play it one more time. I can't help. That clip is too good. Play it one more time. The only ballot drop box in Cuyahoga County, Ohio. You can see this woman right here casting her vote. Did you vote for Reagan or Jimmy Carter? Carter. Carter, okay. We don't want to get too personal with people here, but you can see there's actually a traffic jam. We can come around this way and you can see there are cars. <laughs> Please. Uh, no, don't worry about me. Don't worry about me. <laughs> Just shoving ballots into the drop box. <laughs> oh, man. How do you know we're winning? Joe Rogan talking about Carrie Lake saying, no way. No way. No way there was no fraud. No way there was no fraud. This is, again, while Elon Musk may be the most powerful man in the world, if you were to add together all of his influence, Joe Rogan is the most listened to man in the world. I love Tucker Carlson, but he doesn't have the kind of subs that Joe Rogan has. Joe Rogan has 20 million people that subscribe to his podcast. I mean, that's wild, man. And here's what he tells them, and this is how you know we're winning, baby. Watch. How much election fraud do you think is real here we go joe you want to go to election fraud yeah because i don't think it's zero no it's no not way. zero i think we no. could all agree it's not zero. no way it's not zero and we yeah. know that these voting machines can be f***ed with yeah and we know yeah. that there's some irregularities uh, all that that carry lake stuff in mm -hmm. arizona yeah. that they're trying to dismiss it doesn't look like that's invalid. It looks like there's real fraud there. It looks like there's some real shenanigans there. At the very least, there was voting machines that weren't working properly, and it seems very suspicious that a lot of them were in Republican areas. There's a lot of shenanigans. I stood in a voting line in Maricopa County. I've never seen such dysfunction. I couldn't believe it. I mean, I just couldn't believe it. Not only the lines out the door and down the street, but also these were like Republican suburban areas and these people didn't know what the hell to do with their votes. It was a, it was a nightmare. It was chaos. We are living in the year 2023. We're looking at colonizing Mars. We're doing private space flight now and we can't figure out our elections. Something's wrong, man. Something's evil. Something's sick. Something's super sick in places like this. You'll recall in Maricopa County that all the Republican areas got the wrong size paper. Oh, so the machines all broke down and Republicans who don't sit on their asses, who work day and night like we do and like you do, uh, we got to go to work. And what was the margin of error there? Also, they take all these ballots, all these mail-in ballots in Arizona. I got all these buddies in Arizona. They're like, same problem. They get mailed all these ballots. Everyone gets mailed. It's, you get your entire house gets hit by like a like forty ballots get mailed to your home. How is the Secretary of State who's overseeing the election, who certifies the election? How's she able to be run for governor? How are you able to certify your own election? It seems like a very easy law to pass that you shouldn't be allowed to be in charge of the election mechanism for your own election. Does anybody even know who Katie Hobbs is? Who the hell is this lady? This is, this is a lady like that couldn't even like withstand a James O'Keefe interview. James O'Keefe like sent a reporter to go talk to her and she spilled her Coca-Cola all over everything. Grab that clip. That's so hysterical. Nobody liked her. Like, she couldn't even draw a crowd at a nursing home. Like nobody even recognized her on the street. Carrie Lake on the other hand is a rock star. Yet Carrie Lake, after weeks and weeks and weeks of counting inside a super secret tabulation center, Carrie Lake ends up losing. Hmm. Strange that. Strange that. Well, check this out. We're winning. Guys, we're winning. Okay? It's a, this is a positivist show. We're a positivist show. Carrie Lake, court finds Arizona signature mashing process is unlawful. A massive win for election integrity. The court order uh, has determined that Arizona effectively just didn't even have 
any integrity at all in their elections. And that there is a, there was no like, there was no matching records for the, for the voters. So this is something Carrie Lake often talked about, which is that like, like every single vote was sent in with like a scribble or like just a dot, just like a bop for the signature. And so there was no, there was no system to actually match signatures, which would be the only way that you could determine if an actual human being was voting or if somebody was just going in like they did in New Jersey and like they did in Connecticut, grabbing ballots out of mailboxes and shoving their own votes in there. A judge has found that Arizona's signature matching process for mail-in ballots is unlawful, delivering what the plaintiffs in the lawsuit call a massive win for election integrity. Really good. So this means that the Secretary of State during these elections was requiring ballots to be counted despite using signatures that did not match anything in the voters' record. This is a clear violation of state law. Former gubernatorial candidate Kerry Lake, who sued the Maricopa County officials over the signature verification process, uh, was used last year uh, uh, uh celebrated the decision on X. So can we get a judge to declare that we need to redo that election? That'd be nice. Where are these judges? Who the hell voted for this lady? Look at this clip of look at this clip of Katie Hobbs. Nobody went. Katie Hobbs didn't debate. She didn't hold campaign events. This sh this is the shadiest thing I've seen in my entire life. Didn't hold the campaign events. Wouldn't debate. Carrie Lake was a phenomenon. Friend of the show comes on the show all the time. Was a phenom. Katie Hobbs can't even like eat a burger and talk to a James O'Keefe reporter. Check this out. Maxwell's Project Veritas action. Ask a brief question about statement that he's made. Oh, okay. She spills her drink. Got it. All right. So in Bridgeport, now in Connecticut, what started all this, started this ball ro a rolling. Oh, and by the way, before I move on from Arizona, I think we have, I think we have this lower in the script here. We have uh, Arizona fraud news. Just an important, just, just so, so that you know that people, like, just in case you're wondering if this is happening in, in the state of Arizona, the answer is yes. Here's the AP. Arizona woman uh, admits guilt in ballot collection scheme. This woman is now a felon because she illegally collected, here we go, straight from the AP, illegally collected early ballots in the 2020 election, and then she filled those ballots out. So she grabbed all the ballots out of the mailboxes. She's a Democrat. Her name is... Uh, Guillermina Fuentes, 66. She is a well-known Democrat operative in the border city of San Luis. And she persuaded voters to let her gather and fill out their ballots. This would never happen if the balloting process was run by the little old grannies that run my ballot process. But when you mail everyone a ballot, People, criminal felons like this will grab all the mail-in ballots. Mail-in balloting and drop boxes should be illegal in all 50 states, period. Constitutional amendment, pass it. She gathers all the ballots. So this lady's a felon. She's pleaded guilty to this, okay? This is not some esoteric, I'm not jawing about this. This is, she's pleaded guilty. She's, she pled guilty in court, okay? This, she's a felon. She grabbed all the mail-in ballots. She's a Democrat activist in a Latino community. She went into these Latino homes. She paid them or whatever. I, I don't know. Grabbed all their ballots, filled them out, and then voted for them. E one, two, three. Easy peasy. Lemon squeezy. And now she's a felon, okay? So what do you do? What do we do now? Well, we, we, we impeach. We impeach these people. We remove them from office, we go after them, and we start to ban the processes of the, the processes that have broken our elections. Dr. Fauci put together a pandemic in order to scare the hell out of little old people and to encourage and to agitate the creation and collection the, the, the creation of these systems to break these systems down so that you can create the panic to break American elections. Man, it really does make you wonder. If they're willing to do all of this to stop Donald Trump from, from, from winning in 2020, stop Donald Trump from winning in 2020, like, dude, how much of a threat is that guy to the system? 
I mean, holy cannoli. How much of a threat was Donald Trump? I mean, consider the consider the the effort that it took to pull off a heist like this. Consider the the, the enormous. I mean, it's it's impressive, quite frankly. Now, evil doesn't sleep. Demons don't sleep. And so you assume that these people just are, you know, utterly driven by evil and they cannot stand the fact that they're not in control. And they'd rather have the country in flames than have Donald Trump in charge. Something to keep in mind through the year 2024 of our Lord. And by the way, Sunday is marks one year till the election. So here we go. Sunday, this Sunday, one year to the 2024 election. Are you ready? It, ma it makes you wonder. Like these people, they're so evil. They would rather break this country. They would rather shatter this country into a thousand pieces and cast it like dust to the wind. They'd rather destroy your lives, your children's lives, your inheritance, everything that you've built. They would rather break this country asunder than to hand power over. Either they can run it or no one can run it. That's the way that they think. You ever you, Have you ever had a three-year-old? I have a three-year-old and they want a toy. And they like if you take the toy, like they'll, they'll before their little sister like gets a hold of the toy, like they they'll they'll break it, rip it, crack it. They'll break it, like if they're in a bad mood, before giving the toy to to another kid. It's a the mendacity of it, the pure profound evil, encapsulated in something like this. It it requires fighters. That's why we call it the Benny Brigade. That's why we are in the salty army. They salty about this story. Republicans move forward with articles of impeachment against election administrator in Wisconsin. Boom, baby. Madison, Wisconsin. 15 articles of impeachment against Wisconsin elections commissioner Megan Wolf have been referred to the assembly committee as back and forth battle over the administration of the 2020 election. The state continues. Good. The resolution introduced on Thursday lays out Republicans' concerns about Wolf's handling of the 2020 election, which came amid the height of COVID-19 pandemic, then includes allegations that Wolf unlawfully promoted uh, maladministration with the use of drop boxes and promoted and encouraged illegal alterations of absentee ballot applications during the administration of the 2020 presidential election. What are we reading from here? Fox 47. Okay, got it. Not InfoWars again. Okay, whoa, wow. Am I allowed to read it now? Because it's... This is being written by the corporate media? Is this, is this finally happening because it's being written by the corporate media and tweeted by Elon Musk? The resolution has been referred to the assembly based on the government accountability and oversight. The move comes a month after the assembly speaker uh, said he would not pursue impeachment of Wolf, citing an ongoing court case uh, as to whether the Senate had the authority to vote to remove her uh, from her role when it did so in December, in September. Since then, conservative groups began running ads against Voss uh, if he wouldn't move the impeachment process forward, his office said that that did not factor into his decision to assign the resolution to a committee. Oh, so they're, we're flipping. People don't like this guy, this Robin Voss guy. They say he's a real scumbag. Anyway, they're going to impeach the lady for breaking the election for un... It's always the same thing. Mail-in balloting and drop boxes. There you go. It's always the same thing. What's done in the dark, ladies and gentlemen. Whew. It is really, really remarkable to see how much Dinesh D'Souza was right. It is remarkable to see how much uh, these people are uh, being exposed. And it's, it, it's worth us asking uh, if we wish to maintain a country. I'm happy losing elections. I'm a Republican. I, the Republicans like lose elections for a living. Like, I, I, like it's not about that. For Democrats, it's about permanent power forever. I just assume that that's not going to happen for us. For me, it's simply about fairness. Now, I know on level, if we message well enough and we have the morals and the capacity and the grounding in reality, we can actually win. We can beat them by the numbers. We're the only ones reproducing, by the way. We can win the culture wars. Everyone just have five kids. Everyone have five kids. You want to win the culture war? Have five kids. That's it. My wife and I are on three. Number four, come on, baby. Come on, number four. Who wants number four? Johnson baby number four. Let's go. Like, you can win the culture wars. It's easy. Have five kids. There you go. We'll win on the messaging. We win on connectivity and entertainment and 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 being funny, and being viral, and being able to relate with people. We win on being able to, like, grow and gather audiences and influence because our arguments are better, because they're founded in truth. 
They're founded in like philosophical realities, biological realities, like all those things will win. And we have the vast majority of the people with us. We do. We do. We do. The demographics are not looking great for Democrats. So what happens? How do we flip this thing? How do we how do we reorient? Yesterday we had uh, Jim Jordan on the show, and I'm going to start asking the the people who come on our show, uh, which we are honored to have. I'm going to start asking about these. The, the, this is in the this is in the news. This is something that should have never left the news. And I'm going to start asking these questions, right? Jim Jordan was on the program yesterday uh, and had this to say about election fraud, and I think it's a good start. Watch. We're not, there's all kinds of things we're not allowed to say. We're not allowed to, you know, only Democrats are allowed to vote against accepting the electors uh, on, on January 6, uh, 2001, January 6, 2005, January 6, 2017. But if Republicans raise concern like we did uh, in, in 2021, oh, somehow that's wrong. You can't do that. So even though Democrats have done it every time a Republican's been elected this, uh, this you know, this century. Um, so, yeah, there's always this this double standard, unfortunately. What we want is is fair elections, free elections. We want everyone to vote who's allowed to vote. That's a system we want. But we also want the safeguards in place where you show a voter ID, where you have the signature match and you follow the law. That's how we want it to work. And we want whoever wins, wins. That's how our great system is supposed to operate. Yeah, that's what we're going to do, man. We're going to start pressing this issue. We're really excited. We're really excited that that we were able to get Elon Musk to definitively sound off on this uh, critical, critical infrastructure issue that is a threat to all of us. It's a threat to all of us. I want to do a big like I want to do a big documentary on the history of election fraud in America because they, they like LBJ won his first elections on election fraud, like quite like like demonstrably so like it's empirical. It's well documented. This is not a new thing. This is an old thing. And it's a real issue. Like it's a true problem. And we need to get like, we need to sober up and like begin to get the, the guts to address it, ladies and gentlemen. We have the energy to address it. We always carry the energy on this program. Man, we just did like almost an hour on just election fraud. We could go on for the next 20 hours. We carry the energy on this program because of our friends at Sweet Delicious Blackout Coffee. Blackout Coffee is the coffee that I drink every single morning. It is brewed by patriots in Florida. It is brewed and created by people who want to energize and give us the energy to fight the communists. It is truly a delicious bean of coffee and it's a ground and I smell it each morning and it gives me a pep in my step. And they send me this awesome blackout coffee mug with my sweet American flag on the back of it. Baby, it's what I drink. Go to blackoutcoffee.com slash Benny and use the coupon code 20% off for your first order. Get the energy to fight the communists. Stay true to your values. Blackoutcoffee.com. Click the link in the description. Don't go pumpkin spice latte on me, please. Don't go full soy, please, please. Blackout coffee, baby. Uh, speaking of pumpkin spice prison, Maybe that's where Nancy Pelosi is heading. Nancy Pelosi announced on the House floor yesterday that she was served with a subpoena for a criminal case? What the hell is this about? The House clerk straight up started, like, went to the floor and was like, hey, uh, I have a note from Nancy Pelosi here. I'm going to read it. Uh, Hi, I'm Nancy Pelosi. I've just been subpoenaed for a criminal case, and I'm complying because I'm a criminal? Blew everyone's minds. Watch. Notify you formally, pursuant to Rule 8 of the Rules of the House of Representatives, that I, the Honorable Nancy Pelosi, Speaker Emerita, and U.S. Representative for the 11th Congressional District of California, have been served with third-party subpoenas from the prosecution and the defendant to produce documents in a criminal case in the United States District Court for the Northern District of California. After consultation with the Office of General Counsel, I have determined that compliance with the subpoenas is consistent with the privileges and rights of the House to the extent. OK, so so what Pelosi says is I'm going to comply with a criminal subpoena in a criminal case. Subpoena, of course, is what happens when you are not complying and the court is going to compel you to comply. And so what case is this exactly? Which one? Is this hammer time? What's this? Is this Paul Pelosi's? Drunk driving case? Nancy Pelosi is caught up in like four or five different concurring scandals. Her husband drunk drove and to a criminal illegal migrant nearly killed him. Who knows what else Paul Pelosi was on? 
Nancy Pelosi is the biggest, most prolific insider trader in all of Congress. Does this have something to do with insider trading? Nancy Pelosi is completely and totally wholesale sold out her city of San Francisco to the goblin zombie mob that runs the place now. Does that have something to do with crime and corruption? Nancy Pelosi is in the pocket of Beijing. Or does it have something to do with uh, Paul Pelosi and the man with a hammer that mysteriously entered Paul Pelosi's house and Paul Pelosi didn't declare an emergency and sort of stood there grabbing the hammer at the door and the cops and the footage? Totally weird story. These questions are, of course, asked by Jesse Waters. I think we have the answer now. Check this out. So Nancy Pelosi is being subpoenaed in a criminal case. What criminal case? That person who isn't Nancy Pelosi wouldn't say. Could it be related to the hammer attack on her husband, Paul E.P.? Because that trial starts next week. Does it have something to do with her husband's DUI? Or is there something behind door number three? Maybe a little insider trading. The son's shady business dealings. We don't know. We asked Pelosi's office to explain. They said no comment. But subpoenas aren't nothing, especially in a criminal case. It suggests there's something Nancy does not want to hand over voluntarily. You don't subpoena the willing. Why would Nancy Pelosi have the House read that from the floor? That don't make no sense. Why, why not just handle this in private? Something's happening. Something's wrong here. Something's weird here. Why is it always these people at their houses with this weird stuff going on? Now, we're going we're gonna to play the clip of Paul Pelosi from the police footage again. We don't know why people aren't asking more questions about this. It's worth asking, right? Like, Paul Pelosi didn't declare an emergency. Didn't Listen, man, maybe the guy was just scared. I get it. I get it. I, so this would be a terrible thing to happen. But much like with Obama and the chef, Obama and his chef, the guy who's a proficient swimmer drowning, and then they they lie. They, they then they lied. Step every step of the way, they lied about where Obama was, his relation to this guy. Like when they when you start lying, you're trying to hide something. The truth shall set you free. The truth shall set you free. Okay. So so it's worth asking questions like why didn't Paul Pelosi declare an emergency here? Why didn't Paul Pelosi? Why is Paul Pelosi holding the guy's hammer? This guy's clearly insane. The guy's name is David DePape. But also, according to David DePape's own family, he's a Democrat. He's a lifelong Democrat, lifelong Greenpeace activist guy. So what's going on with this guy? And more importantly, is he on fentanyl? Is he on some drug that's been allowed in San Francisco because of Nancy Pelosi's policies? I don't know. These are questions we're interested in asking. And now, according to sources, the criminal case is about this hammer attack. Ladies and gentlemen, this is what happened. Watch. Fucking said 2620, right? No, 2640. Oh, yeah, it literally said in there. Hi. Hey guys. How you doing? How are you? What's going on, man? Everything's good. Hi. Hi Drop guys. the hammer. Um, nope. Hey, 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 hey. What is Pardon going on right now? I'm not getting an answer. I'm probably. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, obviously, I'm, I'm, you know, I, I always play this saying we don't want anyone to ever get hurt. We don't want, we're not, we don't take joy or find any type of like happiness in anyone getting hurt. We don't want anyone ever, no matter how much we disagree with them, to ever be harmed. Uh, so obviously terrible that the guy was harmed, but the, the questions remain. It's strange behavior. Also, there was a reporter named Miguel Aguilar I seem to be the only person who cares about this, who reported this out for the local NBC news station and they deep sixed him. They then like fired the guy because he said accurately what happened in that video, that Paul Pelosi did not declare an emergency, that Paul Pelosi did not run to the cops, did not say it's an emergency and flee to the cops, that Paul Pelosi was holding the hammer with the guy. Paul Pelosi was in his underwear. Okay, it was late at night, you know. And... And that there were that there were strange happenings. It's a, it's a strange, it's odd behavior. Okay, that's all. That's all. Okay, and it's worth asking questions. So why would you get the reporter fired? Why would the Obamas lie about where Obama was when his chef died? You know that Obama was actually on the scene. Now we actually know that. We've done a number of videos on it. But that, that Obama was was 
brought to the house very quickly and shortly afterwards when his chef tragically perished. And it is a tragedy. The guy had a wife, kids, everything, you know, tragedy. But it's worth asking, why did they lie? Obama's publicist said he wasn't there. He wasn't, he wasn't even on the island. Now it turns out he was on the island. He was just at a house down the road. And that Obama was there when the police were interviewing the witnesses, that Obama was personally present. Well, that's weird. Why would you lie about something like that? Why don't you tell us the truth? And it looks like Nancy Pelosi's being criminally subpoenaed in this case that has to do with the hammer attack. So expect more on that front from us, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Joe Biden, just a quick clip here. Joe Biden got roasted to his face. The president of Peru, is it Peru? The president of Peru went to, uh, poor Royce. President of Peru went to the White House and Dominican Republic. Okay, thank you, ALX. Dominican Republic. Royce, do you need reading lessons? What's going on here? You're literally reading the tweet. Read the tweet to me. Read the tweet. Go, go. Read it. Read it. Read it out loud. Read the tweet. Read it, Royce. Okay, do okay, good. Oh, thank you, Royce, for leaving me hanging. Good. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, Dominican Republic president went to the White House and roasted Joe Biden to his face. Joe Biden has uh, spent uh, about half his presidency sitting on a beach. And the Dominican president was like, <laughs> we have lots of beaches in the Dominican Republic. Maybe you'd like to sit on them, Mr. President. Watch. Mr. President, we look forward to welcoming you soon to the Dominican Republic at the next, at the next summit of the Americas in 2025 where we will continue to develop the bonds of prosperity, security, and democracy that bind us together. And that summit will be in Punta Cana, so you have time to be on the beach. <laughs> okay. Biden's like, uh, I'm going to bomb you. <laughs> Speaking of a bomb that blew up in Democrats' faces, uh, the biggest donor for Democrats uh, in America is facing 115 years in prison, Sam Bankman fraud, to talk to us about this biggest crypto scammer on earth. We bring on the great producer, ALX. ALX, tell us what's up with Sam Bankman fraud. You own plenty of crypto. Were you were you stolen from? <laughs> I was not stolen from. I was smart enough not to use FTX. Um, and yeah, so he was found guilty on all seven counts of fraud, conspiracy, money laundering. Um, it's never a good sign when the jury comes back uh, in a couple of hours. Uh, so everyone kind of knew that they were going to find him guilty. Um, and, and even like, you know, in the Bernie Madoff case, I think it was like a couple days, I think it was like four days or something. Um, but this was kind of like an open and shut case. And I mean, the evidence too, with, you know, cell phones and texts and everything, it, it just makes it so much easier to track these types of things. Um, but as far as crypto myself, uh, I mean, I own a lot of Dogecoin. Um, I got in that pretty early. Um, and I mean, I've, I've sold like a lot of it. So I, I, you know, made what I did, but like my, my thing was I would not be like devastated if I lost everything that I have in crypto. That's the, the always the hesitation, um, with, with people because not just FTX, but just in general, holding crypto is a risk. Um, but if you're going to do it, you're better off going with like a more established institution like a Robin Hood or whatever, because they also do securities. Uh, the problem with FTX is uh, just the management there uh, with Sam Bankman Fried, and they're kind of being propped up by uh, by like Democrats and everyone. Um, and and nobody nobody actually knew the actual financial state of the company. Um, and I know he had that whole thing with his uh, his girlfriend with Alameda holdings or whatever, and they're like money laundering back and forth. So um, it's always a risky investment, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't do it with, you know, scammers like uh, uh, SBF. So first off, why Doge? <laughs> Doge, Doge is always for the meme, even as like, you know, 
a, a kid like in high school i love the doge meme and i bought doge <laughs> in high school as a joke like when it was fractions of fractions of pennies and even i i think when i like seriously started buying it it was like 2018 or 2019 and it was only like i want to say 200 bucks of it but like it ended up being worth like two years later um like that that i i purchased was like two grand um so i i made like just from throwing two bucks in it i made like two grand easily but like i made more after that but <laughs> doge doge has always been and like elon musk says the most entertaining outcome is the most likely um so there everyone is all like oh bitcoin all like all these serious cryptocurrencies and he's like eh, why not doge and then that year that like it spiked um, it outperformed all the other cryptos for the year. So that is an entertaining outcome right there. And then his his outcome for it is for it to be the actual leading cryptocurrency in the end. Um, and he's already floated the idea with X that uh, he wants with X payments to be you know usable with Doge. With Tesla, you can actually buy merch and stuff. Uh, they're working on it for car payments as well. But uh, for merch right now on, on Tesla's site, you can make payments with Doge. So um it's just it's kind of funny because people don't take crypto seriously um but like this little meme coin or whatever uh it, it just outperformed the market in a year um that that one year but i mean it's it's fun uh, that's how i view it the power of memes man the power of memes yes, sir. just just bound pivoting back to uh, uh sam bankman fraud like no scam bankrupt fraud that's the that's the moniker scam bankrupt fraud. this guy was the biggest democrat donor. like was he trying to buy his way out of prison he was the biggest democrat donor in the 2022 cycle look at it look at this chart this is like all of the people that he donated to you might have lost all your money but joe biden you might have lost joe biden won right democrats won uh and he just stole money from people and donated it to democrats will these people ever get their money back um i don't i don't know if they will but that that's that's the that's the thing too uh the democrats found the use for him and then kicked him under the bus when he was no longer useful um <laughs> and that it seems like he was no longer going to play along and um they're they're not going to carry water for him and uh he, he's going on they'll find their they'll their alexander soros um now that george soros has passed on his fortune to him uh yeah. they'll get their money the way that they do um, but, but yeah, it, this is nuts to, to look at all of these names. Um, and just the attitude that he kind of had towards these donations is he knew what he was doing. He's like, I'm going to throw these guys a bone and they're going to take care of me. Right. Um, and, and that's why it went unnoticed for so long is because of the, so many people that were bought off, um, and, and they weren't going to look into it until like, you know, should actually have hit the fan and it became impossible to ignore. Um, so I don't think he'll get like a hundred years or whatever, but I, I think it will, his punishment will be pretty severe. So it really is interesting to see like the onion layer peeled back here. So this is how it works, right? So if you're a criminal, you just pay off the politicians and it all goes away. There's photos of, uh, scam bankrupt fraud with Maxine Waters, right? Mad Maxine, like she, she's chair of the financial services committee. Like there, there, it, that's the, that's the photo. That's the only photo you need, right? To see how it all works. All right, you just pay you pay these people off and you get out of jail. This is the same thing that it works for the same way it works for Hunter Biden. And now we are seeing exposed how voter fraud works in Connecticut with the drop boxes. And in this in this small microcosm, you're actually seeing it. And Elon Musk is signal boosting this, which I think is so massive. Uh, tell me what what are the ramifications of someone like Elon Musk, who I consider the most powerful man in the world, uh, signal boosting the story from yesterday? Yeah, I, well, for just the first part, I, I'd like to reflect on the fact that one year ago, what he's posting probably would have been a bannable offense. Mm. Um, I mean, mm. he actually took control of the company about a year ago, but there were still election integrity policies or whatever. You get the, the classic label um, yeah. and everything. Just like this would have got you thrown off the platform yeah. a year ago. And now the owner of the platform is sharing this. Yeah. Um, so just, you know, the paradigm shift just right there is is insane. Um, and then as far as the ramifications, already the the Biden administration uh, has has come after him uh, like a year ago, starting a year ago because of the Twitter files. Um, so he's kind of still exposing this stuff. But 
I, I think his his response to this and, you know, he's getting more politically involved is he should become kind of not even right wing George Soros, but just the, the George Soros of common sense, I would say, as far as funding local elections, because the thing is, these things aren't even right wing, like his viewpoints. Like he posted that meme originally, he's like me and it's the left and the left was moving left. And by default, he seems far right because yes. he holds more centrist views and they're moving farther left. So it's like um, he wants to have simple common sense policies and he should, you know, funnel his money into elections. If they're going to play like that, Democrats are, he should do the same. Um, and, and he should funnel money into local elections. Um, you know, if as long as everything's legal and everything, that's what he should be doing. Um, in my opinion, obviously, I can't really tell him what to do with his money, but he's made the investment in in Twitter and now X um, because of the public good that it served. And this right here is a story that's getting out there because of the purchase he made. Um, so if you'd like to continue that type of activism, I mean, his money, his money would actually change you know the shift of elections in you know this upcoming election um but yeah as far as ramifications the biden administration is already going after him so i don't know how much more they can do uh the lawsuits over him not hiring illegal aliens when you know he's dealing with weaponry and rockets it's like it's literally the law um and whatever else they're going after him for ftc the doj they're, they're hitting him with everything for building a glass house, supposedly, or whatever. It makes no sense. But I mean, I feel I feel like he'll come out OK in the end. I mean, you say you can't tell Elon Musk what to do with his money, but you own two thousand dollars worth of Dogecoin, ALX. I think <laughs> I think you have some leverage, my friend. I think you have some leverage. I, 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 I I'm I'm enlivened. I am excited. Like our show, our show, you know, you, you, we put the show together every week. Like I, I feel as though when moments like this happen, this is like the purpose of this show, because what we're doing is we're amplifying these messages. Like it takes somebody to actually come out and to th like throw the first stone and to say, Hey, yo, like, like this, these are things that are happening. And we're, uh, we are, we are, we're trying our hardest to be fearless on this program and to start creating narratives and be, to be the signal. And Elon Musk grabbing hold of this and and boosting it out is like the purpose of what we do here. And it's pretty awesome. Ladies and gentlemen, ALX, often behind the scenes, often behind the scenes, but the great producer ALX, uh, not behind the scenes uh, anymore, 610,000 <laughs> followers on X. I'd like, I'd like to point out to Michael Avenatti's, um, something came up the other day uh, where people were sharing their DMs, evil DMs from Avenatti, and it came up the other day, so I shared mine. And he was bragging that he had 700,000 more followers than I do. I'd like to point out that number one, he now has less followers than I do, and number two, he's in jail. So just wanted to throw that out there. <laughs> hey, Alex, with the gavel slam! <laughs> What what an absolute what an absolute Alex absolutely bodies Avenatti. A great way a great way to start your weekend. Thank you Alex. Everyone follow Alex. Godspeed, my friend. Thanks for having me. This is what you're doing when you support our program and, and like this is a read for the benny brigade we encourage you to join the benny brigade if you love what we do here but you're helping uh, us employ and provide careers uh uh f in in a tough economy for young creatives that love this country and love this nation and want to see it continue and the median age of the company is like probably 22 and and, and and it's so awesome. And we thank you for supporting us. Benny Johnson slash brigade. If you wish to support us and keep us independent, uh, less than a less than a McDonald's Happy Meal per month uh, is what it uh, costs to be a member of the brigade. The fastest growing uh, exclusive membership community uh, online. We have a ton of new products that we're going to roll out just for brigade members and uh, brigade questions for our guests and brigade exclusive access to our videos. You always get sent a link before our videos are up. You get to watch first. It's so great. You get a direct email from us with the with the link to the video. 
and you can watch it before anyone else, sometimes like a day ahead of time. You get your sweet keychain with the salty army on the back. Make sure I hold the American flag the correct way, although I think this is distress. So there is a little bit of distressing news, but we can win. And we win with your support. And so we we just say thank you. Honestly, your support, it uh, helps us continue the fight. And so we just thank you. Times are tough, man. If you're just watching the program and you just subscribe on social media, we also say, God bless you. Like, thank you. Godspeed. Uh, and we're doing the, we're putting in the work. We're getting Elon Musk to respond to these things. This is why, this is like the brigade helps us with that. We get Elon Musk to respond to election fraud. We will be there. We will fight for you this entire next week, man. Entire next week. We're going to have a wild ne next week. We're going to be broadcasting live from Byron Donald's office on Tuesday. We're going to be up on Capitol Hill. Uh, we're going to be doing um, work with Ted Cruz up on Capitol Hill, doing some uh, really cool projects with him, really cool projects with other memers of Congress, right? If you know, you know, Mike Collins of Georgia. Uh, we're going through to um, chill with him and a number of other great uh, representatives. We're, again, I'm very excited. We're going to do the show live from a congressional office on Tuesday. Hyped about that. Uh, then we are going to go to the uh, debate, uh, the debate in Miami, and we're going to be covering that. We're going to bring you all that live. We have an in there, uh, Vivek. We're going to be chilling with Vivek. We're going to roll through the debate with Vivek. The RNC hates us. The RNC hates Vivek. So it's a match made in heaven. <laughs> uh, and baby, it's I mean, you know, what's it going to be without Donald Trump? It it keeps getting. Keeps getting tougher for the Republican field. Tim Scott, ha Senator Tim Scott from Florida, has endorsed Donald Trump. It's pretty big. It means a massive endorsement. Like, one, uh, Rick Scott didn't endorse over the last two elections. And two, uh, you know, he's from Florida. And Ron DeSantis is running from Florida. And so endorsing Donald Trump over Ron DeSantis, I mean, that's, that's quite a – that's a muscular move, baby. So Rick Scott endorsing Donald Trump uh, – Scott published a piece for Newsweek saying that he thinks it's time for Republicans to unite behind Trump uh, and said he knows that the GOP candidate is running for president. He believes Trump is the only one who can beat president, can beat Joe Biden. Uh, Florida Senator also said uh, he will not ask other candidates to drop out of the race. He believes that the stakes are too high. Trump is the best option for the country. You agree? Hey, man. We keep our head held high here. And... We'll be bringing you that sweet Donald Trump interview. We got something special planned with that team. The 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 amount of work that we are going to do in 2024 is going to make your head spin. The 2024 election is now a week, a one year away from this Sunday. One year away. So prepare yourselves. Keep calm. Keep focused on what actually matters. The truth, the word of God. Jeremiah 46, prepare your shields, large and small, march for battle, harness your horses, mount the steeds, take your positions with helmets, polish your spears, put on your armor. What do I see? They are terrified. They are retreating. Their warriors are defeated. They flee with haste without looking back. There is terror on every side, declares the Lord. That's the salty army, baby. That's the army that you want to be part of terrify your enemy. Do it with truth. Do it with strength. Speak loudly, muscularly, in a masculine way. Speak the truth. Be a man. Stand up for something and march forward. It's your boy, Benny. We're marching right alongside you. Have a great weekend. And this is the greatest country on earth. See ya.